so much for joining us on this very special program as we celebrate Women's Day today. And indeed, it is a day uh, full of joy for all the women around um, you know, the globe. And there's so many issues to talk about on this particular day. But I'm um, very much excited to be part of this wonderful day. And of course, just to remind you that we need to celebrate women not only today, but of course, every day. My name is Rhoda Mlenga and welcome to our Women's Day special. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us. Now, of course, this is a very special day because uh, today I'm actually at uh, the embassy of uh, Sweden, at the Swedish uh, embassy right here in Lusaka. And I will be speaking to Mr. Johan uh, Hallenberg, who is, of course, the Swedish ambassador to Zambia. Welcome. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having us right here. All right, now, um, today is a very special day. Um, it's International Women's Day, and obviously um, the theme, you know, speaks a lot um, of things. The theme is uh, digital innovation and technology for gender equality. Um, how do you interpret this theme? I think it's a, it's a very good theme, a very relevant theme. Um, I think it speaks about um, the, the need to include women, to make sure that all women also are included when the digitalization happens. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that there is, a, there is a gap between men and women in general, mm -hmm. and that is also seen in the digital world. Uh, women normally, including in Zambia, mm -hmm. they have less access to mobile phones, for example. Yeah. Um, so this, um, that's an important aspect of the theme, but I think also the theme is, is an opportunity to mm -hmm. look at how innovation and new technology mm -hmm. can, can promote women's inclusion and women's rights. Mm -hmm. What does International Women's Day mean to you? Well, as you said, we need to, to raise human rights and gender equality every day. Mm -hmm. But of course, today is a day where we uh, look, look at women's, women's enjoyment of human rights mm -hmm. and gender equality in, in a particular light. Mm -hmm. We need to shine the light on these sort of structural inequalities that exist mm -hmm. that makes women have less access to many of these rights that, that we men take for mm -hmm. granted. So that, I think that's the important thing with, with the Women's International Day. Mm -hmm. Um, usually during um, International Women's Day, we see people post on social media, you know, jokes about how men are not equally, you know, celebrated, you know, having a whole day to themselves. Why celebrate women um, in, at this particular time? I think we, everyone knows that women have been, been put aside and, and have suffered uh, discrimination for such a long time. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I, I, I still think we need to, to raise the issue of women's rights and women's enjoyment of human rights mm -hmm. um, in particular. And this mm -hmm. is a good day to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, from, from our perspective, the Swedish government's perspective, we have been championing and working with gender equality for a long time mm -hmm. um, in Sweden, but also, also abroad in the countries that we work, mm -hmm. working partnership uh, with the government here, with civil society here, to, to promote equality between gender and women. And we will continue to do that. Absolutely. Um, still talking about, you know, the importance of women, what are some barriers, you know, you think restrict women from attaining uh, their full potential? I think, I think barriers can be, can be seen and be sort of, um, uh, can be seen and felt in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, you have you have barriers that that relate to policy and laws, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't properly promote women. Mm -hmm. But you also have a, a lot of uh, norms in society that are created over time, mm -hmm. which um, puts women at a lower level than men. Mm -hmm. uh, these norms often speak about what women should do or could do mm -hmm. and often of course that is much much less than men so i think it's a combination these barriers are, are both norms mm -hmm. but could also be in the form of of uh, policies and, and regulatory, mm -hmm. regulatory frameworks so that's what we need to to look at mm -hmm. and to to work with yeah. and the next question of course is how mm -hmm. how do you do that 
And I think um, to work with the norms is something, first you need to understand what these norms actually are mm -hmm. and where they come from. And then to work with communities. Mm -hmm. And here I think uh, traditional leaders in Zambia play a very important role mm -hmm. in looking at these norms and changing those norms which inhibit women, mm -hmm. which, uh, which doesn't promote women. And then on the regulatory side, of course, uh, the government and the authorities play a very important role mm -hmm. um, to, to be progressive and look at, look at regulations in, a, in an open way with a view of, of promoting women's rights. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, there are certain cultural or traditional practices, you know, that are still practiced, especially, well, let's talk about Africa, um, that are very harmful to women and, you know, uh, people have still gone on in practicing some of these uh, cultural practices, traditional practices um, that are very harmful to women, that restrict set, uh, certain, in certain areas women to attain their full potential. How do you think we can change this, especially, you know, the world is moving, the world is changing? As you say, these many of these practices and, and norms they um, they hamper women's women's opportunities, mm -hmm. and and from 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 my point of view, women's economic empowerment is absolutely key for gender equality, um, and there are several different aspects in in promoting economic empowerment. One of these is to promote education, mm -hmm. so. The government now having, having made education free, primary education free, and emphasizing that girls should be in school, that's very important. Mm -hmm. Very important for realizing girls' and women's opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I think that is key. Um, another one is, of course, access to sexual and reproductive health and rights. Mm -hmm. This is something without that access and without the ability to take decisions about your own body, mm -hmm. about your own sexuality, that also hampers women's possibilities mm -hmm. to, to reach their full potential. Mm -hmm. um, I came back last week from visiting Eastern Province mm -hmm. and we visited several health facilities. We mm -hmm. work together with the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. but also with civil society. And some of the images I bring back is the high, high number of teenage pregnancies, for example, mm -hmm. which of course is, is a major obstacle for these girls to reach their full potential. Mm -hmm. So accessibility to sexual and reproductive health and rights, mm -hmm. keeping girls in school, those yeah. are really important things. Mm -hmm. And also, do you think um, with the introduction of uh, CSE, um, do you feel that some of those issues can actually be addressed, especially the fact that you spoke about sexual reproductive health now that, you know, most of these things are being taught in schools and also maybe the introduction of radio programs like the Tikambe and youth-friendly spaces that young people have access to. Do you think some of those issues can be addressed? Absolutely. And I've, I've seen the Tikambe show myself mm -hmm. and I, I really appreciate the work that is being done. Yeah. So important to reach out to, to young people and to, to dare to speak about these issues, mm -hmm. which are close to us all. They're close to us all. So that's, that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, obviously, um, the, the challenges that we spoke about, um, let's talk about women in the political circles. Do you think that women still face a lot of challenges when it comes to, um, you know, just getting some of the roles in politics yes yes i do think that mm -hmm. um, i understand in in zambia uh, today there are about 15 percent of of the parliamentarians that are, mm -hmm. that are female and i think that's too low i think ideally parliament should be a place where which reflects society and society is 50 50 approximately mm -hmm. so uh, i see no reason not to try to achieve that goal also in Zambia, uh, a 50-50 representation. Mm -hmm. um, we have worked with civil society uh, here in Zambia on women's political participation for, for several years. Mm -hmm. And I understand some of the, the hurdles and some of the obstacles that, that exist. Um, but this is something that, that, that we need to continue to, to work with. 
Um, I think it's, it's about changing attitudes, but it's also looking at some, maybe some of the regulations around, around participation mm -hmm. uh, that maybe needs to be looked at more carefully. And also norms. Mm -hmm. What can women do? What are women expected to do? Mm -hmm. um, are women encouraged to take up political positions? Mm -hmm. I feel I've only been here six months, but so far maybe I see that there could be more encouragement to, to have women in the political life. Mm -hmm. And how would you address the cultural issues that form uh, the background of gender equality? I think we need, as I said, I think we need to work with, with them from, from, the, from the community perspective. Mm -hmm. You have elected leaders at community level, but you also have traditional leaders. Mm -hmm. You also have civil society, you have churches. We need to address all these different actors and stakeholders if we are to change the norms. And then simultaneously, in parallel, we need to work, uh, we, have, we need to have a dialogue with the government and authorities uh, on maybe how to tweak and change and reform some of the guidelines and regulations to, to change, to change um, some of the hurdles and mm -hmm. obstacles. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on gender equality in regards to where opportunities are concerned? I think, I think we've 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 touched on this uh, already, but the the lack of gender equality um, it prevents women from having access to some very important things. Mm -hmm. Education is one, health is another one. Making sure that girls and women have access to these areas mm -hmm. will definitely um, help gender equality and will create opportunities. Um, we are trying our best to, to support, uh, both in terms of supporting access to sexual and reproductive health and rights, but also supporting education. Um, we are working with a, with a technical college in, in the northern part of the country to educate women into, into more traditionally male jobs, for example. That's, that's one, that's one uh, possibility. Um, so I think... Um, working together with both civil society and with the government is, is absolutely necessary. Thank you very much for that. Uh, what would be your final words to the women that are watching you today? I think the final words, they're not only for the women, mm. but maybe importantly to the men. Mm. Because our experience from Sweden is that um, in order to make the real change, we need to work with men as well. We cannot only work with women. We need to find um, men that are ready to make gender equality their issue as well. It cannot be an issue only for 50% of the population. Mm -hmm. This is an issue which relates to us all and affects us all. If only, if on, if only half the population is productive and can to the full use their opportunities, then there is a lot of, lot of energy and a lot of opportunities being missed. So men must step up. Male leaders must make gender equality their issue, become good, good uh, role models, and also look actively in how they can promote and be champions mm -hmm. for gender equality in relation to changing regulations, but also changing norms. So that would be my final words. Thank you very much for having us today. Thanks for having me. All right. So uh, this has been a Women's Day special. Of course, uh, we did come through right here at the Swedish Embassy just to talk about uh, women's issues, knowing that today is a very important day uh, for all the women out there, not only the women, but also the men, because, uh, you know, it's a very important day. And um, I have been speaking to Mr. Johan Hallenberg, who is the Swedish ambassador to Zambia. Thank you so much for watching.